An article in this weekend's New York Times Magazine describes tough tactics being used with greater frequency by the U.S. military to stop drug trafficking around the world. The Coast Guard's Floating Guantanamos reports on how suspected drug smugglers are being detained at sea for weeks or even months before they are charged with a crime or appear in an American court. This happened almost 700 times between last September and this September. New York Times reporter Seth Fried Wessler wrote the story in partnership with the Investigative Fund at the Nation Institute, and he joins me now from Boston. So first, Seth, I wanted you to just describe to us what exactly the Coast Guard is doing. And you also featured the story of a gentleman named Johnny. Can you tell us a little bit about what he experienced? Well, the U.S. Coast Guard has been deployed deep into the Pacific Ocean, sometimes as many as 3,000 miles away from the nearest U.S. port to pick up shipments of cocaine moved between South America, Colombia and Ecuador, and Central America. And they're picking up suspected smugglers aboard small speedboats in the ocean. And I write about a number of men who were detained by the Coast Guard aboard U.S. ships in international waters and held there for weeks or months at a time in a kind of detention that's expanding rapidly in the sort of maritime war on drugs. Talk a little bit more about the conditions that these men were held in. They describe conditions where they were, they were they were shackled, often very tightly uh, in tight quarters, unshackled only to be allowed to use the bathroom, which often was only a plastic bucket on the deck of the ship, um, and held day after day. In the case of Johnny Arcentales, who I write about, an Ecuadorian fisherman, he was held with a group of other men for 70 days aboard a series of Coast Guard cutters, and, and he really believed that he might disappear. He had no idea where he was being taken. He was simply being held as the Coast Guard cutters were moving around the Pacific, picking up more suspect, suspected smugglers and detaining them aboard the ships. So where do these uh, people end up? Well, in years past, when the Coast Guard has picked up drugs in the ocean, it's very often sent the smugglers on board those boats back to their countries, back to countries nearby. But since 2012, when the Department of Defense launched a program called Operation Martillo, which really has focused on trying to uh, interdict drugs, cocaine mostly, in and near the transit zones when they leave South America, smugglers, suspected smugglers, have been brought back to the United States in huge numbers to face prosecution here. Can you talk a little bit more about what the Coast Guard said to you during your reporting this story? I mean, what's their response? Well, the, again, you know, the Coast, Guard, uh, the Coast Guard says that it's logistically difficult to operate in the high seas of the Pacific, very far away from, from the United States. And what's clear is that the infrastructure to move people more quickly um, off, of the off of the boats is not, not kept up at all. Coast Guard officers I spoke to, current and former Coast Guard officers, they're really uncomfortable about these practices. They know, and the Coast Guard says, these ships are not equipped as detention centers. So instead, they're holding people in conditions that for the detainees are really um, are terrifying. And is there any evidence that this practice is stopping the flow of drugs into the U.S.? We can't really draw a line between what the U.S. Coast Guard is doing and, and drug use in the United States. Cocaine use in particular, and we're really talking about cocaine here, um, goes up and down, even as the number of people being detained each year in recent years has been going up and up and up. All right. Seth Fried Wessler, thank you so much for your reporting. Thank you.